a special guest today for our next tutorial. Any of you who've watched my video on what to have in your kidding kit know that I recommend having a Kelly's Kid Puller. I thought I wanted to go a little more into detail about um, what a kid puller is and how it works and how safely to use it. And I thought who better to do that with than the inventor of the Kelly's Kid Puller. So I'd like to welcome Kelly Kirkdoffer to our tutorial today. Thank you, glad to be here. Uh, so for someone brand new, who has no idea what a kid puller is um, or, or what I'm talking about. Can you describe what is a Kelly's Kid Puller? A Kelly's Kid Puller is a device that can be used when you have a difficult delivery in either a goat or a, a lamb or a sheep, I guess you'd call the adult. Um, and I do get quite a few sheep, you know, buyers as well or customers. And it's for when you're, you go, they're either malpositioned, the babies are malpositioned in there, a little bit tangled up, or just have a dystocia of some type, which means difficult delivery in medical terms or veterinarian terms. Um, and tell me how you came up with the design of uh, the kid puller. It was out of pure de uh, desperation and need and a lot of heartache from losing babies and losing mamas. And every device I've ever tried out there that are out there on the, you know, the like Jeffers through Jeffers or Premier One, the pig puller, the sheep puller, either the wire is just weight, you know, too thick, not very pliable, or it broke. Most of mine always broke. Pig pull, the pig puller broke, sheep puller broke, and you just couldn't get in there and, and, you know, get it over the baby's head and try to get that baby in the position so you can deliver it. So I out of pure desperation and heartache. I had to come up with something. Yeah. Um, so can you show us um, your Kelly's Kid Puller and um, show us how to use it safely? I, I know you have, there's a lot of little simple features on there that are brilliant in design. It comes packaged like this. When you get it, receive it. It's sort of, it's gonna be looped over a little bit because it just makes the packaging a little bit easier. So then when you get it out of the package, it sort of looks like this. This is the cable, which is a 1 16th um, cable, which has a 480 pound tensile strength, which wow. means break. So I have never had anybody have the cable break. If there's ever a break, it's just going to be here where I do the, the crimping. And if you know, if you don't get one or two kiddings out of this, I will definitely replace it if it broke there. Don't have that very often. I think I've replaced two and all of them I've sold. So this is a 1 16th, which and I, you know, I studied it and studied it, and this is aircraft cable. So that's why it's so strong. It's a little bit different than what you could get at Home Depot or, or um, any of your local hardware stores. So this is the cable, 1 16th. This is called the straws. That's when I describe it, because when you get the, the kid puller, it's going to come with a little brochure that tells, you know, a little bit about it and how to use it. So I, this is the straws. Here's some more cable, and you can see they sl it slides freely in and out of the straws. And then this is the handle. And the crimp part, it can come out of the handle, especially when you're going to clean it, which we'll describe that in a little bit. I put it in the, sort of in the middle of the handle. And so um, this is it. And you're what you're going to do. You want me to describe how to use it? Yeah, please do. So you're going to, when you get this and you have to go in, hopefully you have an assistant, but if not, I'll show you a little secret. So you pull the cable out as far as you can. There's the handle, there's not much left there. And this is gonna give you, I used to make two sizes. I used to make a small goat and then a large goat, a large breed. And then I talked to a lot of different breeders, small breeders, large breeders, and I came up with the universal. So what this does will extend out to 24 inches. So you got 24 inches to play with pretty much. So you're gonna lube up really good, take your jewelry off. Some people wear gloves, some people do not. You're going to get that in your hand and you're going to enter the dough. Now, this is just a little stuffed animal because we can't get does to deliver at the four o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. So we're going to use this little guy. I usually have a different one. So you're going to get in there and it practice, get a little stuffed animal and take a baby goat and just study it, you know, the anatomy of it. So then when you're in there blindly, because you can't see inside that dough, you'll have a little bit more understanding of what they look like. Obviously, they're not going to have little horns yet. Um, so anyway, you're going to sort of lube up. When you practice, close your eyes, lube up, and you're going to find that baby's nose. Now, sometimes they're sideways and everything else, and you just got to position them 
because the proper way to deliver, they're just usually two hoofs forward and the nose. That's the way they should deliver. Sometimes it's one. If you have both feet out, and I explained this in another video, which you probably saw, if they have two feet out, do not pull those feet because that head's going to go back and you're going to try to deliver a throat. It will never, ever, ever come out. So if you see two little hoofs, don't yank on them. Go ahead on in there, lube up, and feel for where that nose is. It should be, it probably is back and sometimes it's down. So you've got to go ahead. I usually put my finger, everybody does it differently, but I always put my finger sort of in their mouth to help bring it up a little bit. And you're going to have this cable and you're just sort of going to work it, work it. And they're slippery in there and you're slippery because you've greased up until you can get that around the ears. Get it around one ear and know that you have an ear and you have a La Macha, I guess that's a little bit different, harder. And then get it around the other. Now there's times you're going to pull on it and it's going to come off because you didn't get it around it good. So once you get it around that goat, if you're by yourself, because of these straws have to go forward. Now you've got this hand in there, right? So you've got to, I've got to switch. I'm trying to get it into the camera. So you've got to push the straws forward. But if it's just you, this is still clean. It hasn't been anywhere yet. Take that handle, put it in your mouth, your teeth. My mother, my mother would kill me for saying, put it in your teeth. But this is soft rubber, you know, soft uh, cable. So, mm -hmm. and then push those straws forward. Now, just for a demonstration, I am going to have to let go. But I want to show you. You will never, everything is safe on here. There is no sharp parts. This cable is, is, is coated. This plastic straws have nothing sharp on them. And no matter how tight you get that, if you look, I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. I've got, I'm going to tighten it as much as it can. But we, if you notice, there's a still a little Y. You could actually get a finger in there. So, so you're not, not going to suffocate the goat. You're not going to suffocate the baby. There's nothing right now that you're going to do to hurt, hurt the dough if you, you know, only touch the baby's head. You're not going to rip the dough or anything. So then you might have, you know, you got it on there. You can take your hand out if you want, but if you're still pulling and it's not coming, just take, you know, you've got a good grip on it or somebody else does. Go back in and grab that baby's head. This should, if you notice, these straws sort of help lift that baby's head, head up too. But you can go back in with the one hand. You've got it on the baby's neck and go ahead and, you know, I, like I said, I put my finger in their, their mouth, sort of grab those little teeth down there and uh, keep that head up. And once you get that nose into the pelvic brim, you know, which is the, the round part of the pelvis, then it's probably going to come on out. Now, there are ways that you can just do a head only delivery. Mm -hmm. The feet may be back tucked in. That's okay. It's not always the easiest, but once you get the hang of it, you can get them out pretty easily. On those, you got it around there and you get the head out. Once you get that head out, that baby's, you know, already out. They're still hooked to the umbilical cord to their mama. Get them, you know, I always suck them out and get their nasal airway. I'm a nurse, so I always made sure their airway was nice and clear. Then you sort of go in. You can, at that point, you can take this off if you wanted, but you may need it on to help pull it. Because, you know, something's happened. They're a little bit stuck. They may be dry. If you wait too long, the dough it can get dry in there from a fluid. So it doesn't demonstrate it quite as much on this one as my other little goat. But you sort of follow over the head, down the spinal cord, and then over. And that's the scapula of the goat right there. Feel that scapula and sort of get in under that scapula. And as you do, that little foot's going to come up. Mm. And once it comes up, you start pulling, and that's into the pelvic brim. The rest of the baby's going to slip right on out of there. Yep. So that's you know, and then once you get that baby out, you take this off. It's still ready for another one. If you're in a, in, you know, still doing more babies, you can feel back in there and see if there's more. It may have taken that one that was malpositioned to be out of the way and the rest are going to hopefully deliver. You know, a lot of it, not every goat, this is not going to work on every goat. This takes, and it should, but, you know, a lot of it's selective breeding, select who you, you know, the kind of doe you buy. If you'd have to, if you get a barnyard, backyard breeder, they they may not have the best, you know, some women can't deliver babies correctly. Same with goats. If they don't have the correct anatomy, it's hard getting the baby out. It, and some people say, oh, I can't get a hand in. Well, if you, you if, they're, if, the do, if the does dilated correctly, you should be able to get a hand in. There are all those does that pelvis is so small. No matter what you do, you're not going to get that baby out. 
But if you, you know, most of the people that buy mine are, are breeders. They've uh, selected, who, you know, their does and selected their bucks not to have huge babies. And this will, should work about 99.9%. But yeah. my husband and I were in it for over 15 years. And the first five years that we did not have good does and they could not deliver. And you can look as they're walking. Um, the pin bones is something you can feel. It's in the pelvis. It's part of their anatomy. And you can feel the distance between the pin bones. But then look at the, it's called the escutcheon area. If you look at their back legs, it looks like an upside down horseshoe. They should have a lot of width in that. If they're like narrow like this, then their pelvis is going to be narrow. If they've got a nice, you know, round horseshoe look like that, then they're probably going to be able to deliver correctly. It's all in their, you know, anatomical makeup. But that's just something that takes time. It takes time to know when to go into that dough, when not to. If you wait too long, they're probably closing back down and um, they're getting dry in there and that makes it difficult, but it takes experience and time and patience, but you can go in, you can go in too soon and you can go in too late. So over the time, you will know when to do it correctly. Yeah. But it does time and experience and let other breeders, you know, educate you and help you. I mean, I know I was, you know, we were bred pygmy goats and all of our people, you know, all the pygmy people were friends and they would help you and you know, teach you everything they could because they didn't want you to go through the same heartache that they went through. We've all, we've all been through it sometime or another, you, you know, and you feel responsible, you bred that dough and then, you know, she can't have, she didn't, couldn't have her babies. You might lose your dough and it's heartbreaking. That is the main reason I came up with this. If you can save one dough and one baby, that's what it's all about. Yep. To me. Right. Well, I did. So the, the, the funny thing is, um, I can relate in a million ways, but um, my first kidding season, I had a, it was my third kidding and the second kid was so stuck and I was not experienced reaching in though I had done a ton of homework. Um, and so I actually took her into the vet. Um, mind you, that kid was stuck in the canal for, it was overnight. That kid was in there for hours. Um, and um, my vet, grabbed a dog leash off the wall. Um, I'm sure it was not sanitary at all and pulled this kid out with, by making basically, you know, a makeshift puller with the, with the, with the dog leash on the wall. I'm happy to report that doe survived that uh, there was a doling, a giant doling survived sitting in the birth canal overnight, which is crazy. Awesome. awesome. Um, but that is why um, a Kelly's Kid Puller is a much better choice. Yes, I have gifted one to my vet. Um, <laughs> I think I've gifted her two, actually. Um, but so there let's- State veterinarian hospitals, that vets absolutely love them. They're yes. good Christmas presents for your vet. Absolutely. And most don't. I'm, I'm sad to report, especially, I mean, um, a lot of vets who there's, it's hard enough to find a livestock vet, but then having the equipment that maybe fits into a Nigerian dwarf, like I breed. Um, so um, tell us how to clean your wonderful kid pillar. It's very easy to clean. It's all one piece. So what I would suggest is just get some nice soapy water. It can be antibacterial water. I don't think I'd use Clorox necessarily. Just a nice antibacterial soap, which you can buy this day and age very easily. Um, you know, pull it out, pull it back to the handle, wash it real good. You can, and you know, pull the handle back this way, wash it, pull one side, and then take and just rinse down the straws with some nice warm water and the soapy water, and then hang it to dry. And it should pretty much look just like this. Now, after about 10 or 12 uses, it's going to start getting little bends here and there. But, um, I'll be honest, the first one I ever made, which did not look nearly the quality of these, I had to perfect these. I probably did a hundred kiddings because I went all over three counties because everybody wanted you to come help. So, right. and it, sort of, it wasn't put together with nice, these nice crimpers or anything. It just, but it lasted me probably a hundred kiddings. I used to show it when I would go to the, I went to some show and tells at some shows and showed them how to use it and let them demonstrate on my little goat. But I showed them and, you know, cause it was almost, it had lasted so long, but it does show it's durable. We call them reposable in surgery. You know, reposable means you use them until you can't use them anymore. And it, you know, these are $14. I only charge $3 shipping right now and shipping keeps going up, up, and up. but um, it's, it's well worth it. Save one baby, save one dough. And you know, you've, you've invested a lot into your livestock. So to me, 
get a kid, get a kid puller. Hopefully it's a Kelly kid puller. Have it on hand. If you never use it, that's fine. But if you have to use it and it gets one baby out or saves a mama, that's all this is all about. That's why I did all this. That's so wonderful. So tell us where people can find them. Where can they buy Kelly's Kid Puller? Um, on Facebook. I have a Facebook page called Kelly's Kid Puller. Um, and then I also have a website. It's um, We're going to put a link to it on it as well. But it's um, www.kelly's. It's K-E-L-L-I-E-S. You do not have to have a pro- apostrophe. Kid, K-I-D, puller.com. And then a backslash product. And then when you click on that, you can buy one, two, three, four, and um, it is reduced in shipping the more you buy. And if you want to buy any wholesale, you know, just contact me by email. That's at KK Puller, which is Kelly Skid Puller, but KK Puller at Outlook.com. I do give discounts for uh, 10 or more, and uh, which uh, MPGA buys, you know, in bulk like that. And then Maggie's kid, or Maggie's, uh, Maggie Dan's. They're pygmy goat breeders, but she puts a maternity kit together. She also puts them in her kits. She buys them wholesale. I've sent them to Kuwait. I've got three waiting to go to Australia, but Australia has some shipping hold right now because of COVID. So I'm just waiting, checking weekly when his can go out. They've gone to Europe, Canada. So they're, they're going all over the United States and worldwide. So. That's fantastic. And I just to repeat, um, you, you are, said this early on, but it sounds like the Kelly's Kid Puller is wonderful for um, dairy goats, full size or small. I'm yes. sure meat goats as well. Um, they certainly have to give birth and, um, and also um, sheep um, are, they're all, okay. yeah, it can be used on any of them equally. So that's great. Yes. Well, those are my questions that I had for you. Um, I'm so happy um, that um, we had this chance. And I know that people probably, if they have specific questions for you, what, what can reach out to you on your Facebook page. Yes, um, again, email. I'm more than happy to answer them. Wonderful. Great. Um, for the business I've already had. I'm hoping to get these into, once I retire, because I'm still a full-time nurse, but once I retire, I hope to see, that you will see these at Jeffers and Premier One and Valley Vet and things like that. I just haven't reached yet because that's quite a large volume when you're working full time. It's not easy. That's true. You'd have to have a lot of product ready to be in big retailers well, like that. Buy all the products I assemble them because I take a lot of pride in, in what I do. And I did, you know, we got it patented. It took me, it's been patented for two years now. It took almost four to five years and five thousand dollars to get it patented. So but well I, worth it. It was well worth it. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you again. It's been lovely talking to you. You and I appreciate your time and um, your confidence in my product. Oh my God, it's bigger than one.